<clears throat> All right, guys. Hello, welcome back. <clears throat> Hello, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be working on my new Yamaha. Well, new to me, not new. Yamaha Moto 4 225. So this is a 1988 Yamaha Moto 4 225 with the dual range gear shifter on it, and uh, it currently has bad piston rings and a bad CDI box. So CDI box is on the way. And we are going to be working on piston rings in this video. Alright, so. I've looked all over YouTube. And I have finally gotten some sort of idea as to how to do these piston rings. So basically, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and remove this gear shifter out of the way. There's one 10 millimeter bolt here. And two 5 millimeter allens right here. This gear shifter should come out of the way after that. And, um. Yeah, I also have lost low range, so whenever it's there, I have no gear shifting, and that's underneath this big stator cover and all that. Uh, I don't have a new gasket for that, and I know that there's a gasket. I could RTV it, but I'm not sure how ATVs like RTV. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that quite yet, because I know in order to do that, I have to remove this cover right here. But uh, yeah, you remove this. This is the chain tensioner, so this gets this keeps tension on this overhead chain. And there's two there's two guides down in there, two valve guides. And uh, we'll talk about that once we get the actual cylinder head off. But there's going to be four 12 millimeter bolts at the top, and then these two six millimeter allens right here, and then the cylinder head should come off. As, assuming you remove the tensioner, because you have to remove the tensioner to remove the cam sprocket. So. I'm going to go ahead and set y'all up on a time lapse, hopefully, and go ahead and get all this removed. I've got a premonition, I'm dreaming you and I, on the darkest fears are coming outside. we got a billion races, we got this melody, and you can trust me, baby, we got everything. Call me whenever you feel alone, baby. And when you need to cry, I'll be by your side Call me whenever you need someone, babe And when you need to escape from a thousand fires I'm gonna kiss you wherever you are And I'm gonna miss you, I will never lie Call me whenever you need someone, babe We're running in the jungle of love Feel alone, babe And when you need to cry, I'll be by your side Call me whenever you need someone, babe And when you need to escape from a thousand fires I'm gonna kiss you wherever you are And I'm gonna miss you, I will never lie Call me whenever you need someone, babe We're hiding in the jungle of love So to remove this, there's two 5mm allens right here that I've got to pop loose. Make sure when you're doing allen bolts, get your allen wrench all the way in there. Okay. 
because uh, script on head bolts are not fun. that valve. So to remove this, there's two 5mm allens right here that I've got to pop loose. Make sure when you're doing allen bolts to get your allen wrench all the way in there. Okay. Because, uh, Fifth to head bolts are not fun. I mean, strip bolts in general are not fun, but Allen heads are like the least fun. Come on. No, so it's just these two. This is all that's holding this piston down. So, go ahead and get one all the way out. Sit over there. So I'm gonna stop being a little bitch at any time. Why is this motherfucker so tight? Oh, my dear lord. The damn thing's insane. There we go. Alright, awesome. The bolt's out. And I actually didn't screw it up. So, hey, that's even better news. Okay. So, still have this attached to our chain, as you can see. I don't think it's off of the off of the crank down there, so that's good. So now we can set that jug to the side, and what we're tackling is piston rings with this. So, um, yeah, and I just watched the video of a guy. He did this. I'm gonna do the same thing. Simply because generally, when other people do things, it's uh, that they've made a mistake, and uh, you're doing it to avoid that mistake. So, you know, right. So your crankshaft is right here. So, it's right here. So I guess in order to get to that, you'd have to actually split the case. We're not going into that. We are simply doing a top end kit. Or I don't know if everybody would call that a top end kit or not, but I guess that would be what I would consider a top end kit. So let me get y'all set up where you can hopefully see this. So 
real quick, I just want to show you what we're removing. So, basically this little clip right here. So, if you can see that, great, awesome, good for you. Um, I hope you can see what I'm talking about. It's about right there. So, right there is where the little ring is. So, I am uh, going to use a pick, I suppose, here. Never done this before, so. Now, we can shove the wrist pin. The other way. Alright, so, I got the piston out there along with the wrist pin here and uh, yeah so basically what happened is is that these o-rings were I guess just not working anymore they look good uh, they're offset like they should be these piston rings are offset like they should be but I'm not too sure what was going on but I was having a little my combustion chamber and um, this was the culprit it had to be because, I mean, do you see the way this thing's designed? There's no other way for oil to get up there. I guess unless it was leaking down behind the, behind the valves. Okay, so I'm in the process of doing a lot of things with this four-wheeler. I'm working on getting my winch mounted up. And uh, we're actually thinking of going a different route with the winch. But eventually, eventually maybe going a different route. But for right now, we're sticking with that. Anyways, regardless. So, ow. Jesus Christ. Ow. This is why you wear boots in your shop, kids. Mm. Okay. That's the cylinder head. I'm getting it cleaned up right now. But, uh, yeah, I dumped the gun a little bit on installing the jug and the piston. But, um, you'll notice I have all these fancy little markings up there. So, I'm going to explain what I did here. Because I don't want to take it back apart. On the other jug, on the old one. Because it goes together the same way as the new one. So, I'm going to explain how it works. Alright, so the, we're going to set the jug aside right now. We're going to talk about those markings. So, basically what I was doing is making sure that my piston ring gaps, as you can see the piston ring gap there, I was making sure that those were 180 degrees offset from each other. So, I had A, B, C, D, and E. So you have five piston rings. You've got two Alright, so if we look, right there, you can see them two shiny rings on the bottom there. Those are both O-rings and the one in the middle is a ring as well. Those are all separate rings and they all need to be placed at different points along the piston. So, if you have one, remember where your gap is, if you have one with the gap this way, the next one needs to have the gap this way. This is to limit the blow-by and, you know, obviously to keep oil from getting up inside the thing, which is why we were doing this in the first place. But, I guess I did go that way originally. So, and basically what I did is I set this one on there and I marked A and number one with A. And then I marked B, and then I did C, D, and then E was there. So that's how I did that. So that whenever I was assembling, I could always look at the top of my piston and remember, okay, the ring needs to be facing this way. That's pretty much what I did. Now, for installing a ring, you can, you can go buy a ring tool if you want. I've never used one. Or you can just do it the way that I do it. And... Uh, should work fine and you can just take this piston like this spiral it down into place so if that's here so if this gap is going to be right there we need to make sure that our other gap is 180 degrees on the other side 
so you can go piston skirt to piston skirt is pretty pretty good way of knowing where it's at so if we go center of the skirt there then we turn it around and make sure that the other ring is also center of the skirt we should be good to go now for installing it into the jug if you will notice I don't know if you can okay if you'll notice this is a tapered edge here basically this piston is made to where it just shoves in there all right so you don't have to worry about a piston ring compressor or anything your piston should just shove in there like that with no really with no real issues so there's the piston and the bore so that's the way that it all goes together but basically so now you know how that goes on all right Get that out. Basically, you're gonna put this on your rod. So on your connecting rod at the bottom, I, I showed disassembly. I think. I hope I showed disassembly. We're gonna hope we have that clips. But if not, you see that little snap ring in there? It's right there. Right there. Right there inside of that. Basically. So imagine you've got a connecting rod coming up. Basically, your your wrist pin here. Goes in like that through the connecting rod and then goes up against the snap ring there. And it's kind of hard to see, but and then you install the other snap ring on the other side, and the wrist pin can't move. I've already done all of this on the new thing going in, um, so now it's all reassembly, and I should be able to record all of that. So, yeah. All right. So I'm torquing the head. The first value that you're going to go to is 10 foot pounds. So you're going to start here with 10 foot pounds. And you're going to go there. To this bolt right here to 10 foot pounds then to here to 10 foot pounds there to 10 foot pounds come right over here to this outline here to 10 foot pounds and then here to 10 foot pounds and that's all of them then <clears throat> you're going to go back through and you're, this is your final torque 17 foot pounds here 17 here 17 here no I'm sorry 17 here 17 here, 17 here, 17 here. This should be all of your bolts. Just imagine, just kind of space them out. It torques so that it, so that it torques the head bolt nice and even, or the head gasket nice and evenly. Now, somebody on the forum recommended to let it all sit for 10 minutes, then loosen it up and retorque everything. You can do that. Uh, I did it. I don't know if it helps or not. That's up to you. I don't actually know the torque on these down here. <sighs> Sorry, I don't actually know the torque on these little two little bolts down here And you can't really get in there with a socket So I just kind of took my allen wrench and got them snug uh, Like I said, I really don't know the torque So I, I, you might be able to do 5, 10 at the most But I mean on a little bitty bolt like that You don't really want to go past 10 Because you'll snap it I'd probably do 7 to 8 If you were just guessing there is a chart that will tell you bolt sizes and torque. Head bolts are a wee bit, are a little bit different, especially these that are super long. You know, because you gotta you gotta think about this head bolt being that long there. So you know, pretty long little head bolt. So you know, these are very specific. A 17 foot pound torque. These should be able to handle 20, but they won't. If you try to torque these into 20, you will snap them. So. 17 is as high as you can go. They may go to 20, but they're going to have a lot of deflection and it's probably going to stretch the bolt a lot. Anyways, I'm going to get I'm going to go ahead and torque my cam here. Uh I don't actually know what the torque is on it. So yeah, I'm going to torque that and I'm going to get back to throwing everything together. And I got to plug in my camera cuz it's going to die. All right. So 
We've got our new jug kit installed. Down there you can see the new jug kit is installed. Fuel lines are all hooked back up. Car is back on it. So, now I have not crunked this thing this morning. I haven't crunked it up and running at all. But, I have already broken it in and all that. So, I'm going to take you through the break-in process real quick. So, I want to get your power going. Alright, see that there, green light's on. Alright, so now that it's running, you're going to want to vary between... Zero and 50% throttle until you get one cut. And, uh, I don't know if you can hear me or not. But, uh, so while it's, when, it, when it's warmed up, this exhaust will become so hot. You know, you, you can put your hand there and kind of feel the heat off of it. That's how you know that the engine is warmed up. Then what you want to do is you want to turn the, in, you want to turn the four wheeler off with either your ignition or your kill switch here. And you can crank it up and drive it like it was supposed to be driven. You know, like, like however you're going to use it or whatever. That's what, there was a guy on YouTube that said the same thing. I'm sure that if you search up four wheeler repair or something along the lines of four wheeler jug repair, he'll say the same thing because that's how I found this information out. I'm sure you can find that video. Uh, I'm probably not going to post a link to it. So, you know, it's by some big name company. I think... It's not Partzilla. I don't know who it is. It's some it's some big company. That, that they sell parts. So, uh, And then here's our light bar switch, just in case you were wondering. Uh, I will show this at night, probably in the next video. And then uh, probably show that one too. I will try to get that video out quick. I'll try not to wait too long on it. Because I know that this video has taken forever. Between waiting on parts and whatnot. But I did want to get this entire video out in one part for you guys. Because I, I know how it is when you're like searching for the second part. It's not out. You pretty much almost forget about the build. So, you know, I wanted to get this all out for you in one part. Get it all done. And, uh, yeah, so if this is an extra long video, I do apologize. I tried to make it, you know, I tried to get all the information in there that I could about doing a jug swap and everything that you needed to know. Um. Uh, if you're going to do it on an 88 Moto 4 like this, uh, you might want to consider the new head bolts as a definite option because, you know, they're stretched and fatigued over time. And uh, as you can see, this thing, I mean, that's choke off. I mean, choke is off here. You can see it's all the way down. Key on, and it just... So. There it is, it's running now. So, and if I pull the choke up, it actually runs a little bit better. So, a bit. so let's turn it off and let's, let's try cranking it with the choke. So, with the choke on it, crank right up. Then we can take the truck off and we can go for a ride. And as you can see, there is no blue smoke. I have a bit of an exhaust loop there, I'm not too concerned about, but yeah. Here's my exhaust pipe, no blue smoke, nice and clear. I have a bit of a tick coming from my engine sometimes. I'm thinking that's our valve. But uh, I'm wondering if I'm still a little bit low on oil, because I did do an oil change in this thing, so. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That's the Moto 4 for you. There's it in all its glory. I will probably eventually repaint this thing. I am. I am going to try to go with the same color, with maybe some pearls in it. And I want to try to find some Moto 4 stickers to put back on it, because I really like those. But yeah, that's it. That's the build, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.